All right, Belt and Road. Uh, the Belt and Road Initiative, which is a, a, a Chinese initiative to build infrastructure, basically um, from China all the way into Europe, uh, you know, all the way really to Western Europe, a base, a, a part of the Belt Initiative, Belt and Road Initiative was um, uh, Italy, with the idea of building uh, but primarily transportation infrastructure, but infrastructure more broadly, so that Chinese goods uh, it, it can be exported easily and cheaply all over uh, South Asia and ultimately into Europe and the rest of the world. Uh, it also was a way for China to gain influence in places like uh, Africa and um, and some less developed areas in, in uh, Asia and in Europe. Uh, you know, a lot have been written about the Belt and Road Initiative and a lot of panic and I think and I think exaggeration have been applied to it. You know, this is a way for the Chinese to, to get everybody in debt and then they all owe money to China, but then, uh, you, you know, they won't be able to pay it, but then they'll be in China's debt forever and then China will be able to control them all and this is a way for China to gain more influence around the world. I mean, yes, and a big no to all of that. No question that this enhances China's... Um, uh, China is lending all this money all over the world, uh, and this is the Chinese government. It's all funneled through Chinese state enterprises. It's it's very uh, through st uh, state banks. It's it's none of this is really uh, private companies. This is all Chinese state. There's no question that this has enhanced the reputation, enhanced the uh, the uh, influence of China all over the world, and indeed it, it has. Uh, it has worked in that sense, but it has also been a massive failure. And a massive failure is exactly this issue around the debt and the fact that the fact that the uh, that this debt uh, could not be ultimately paid back. That many of these projects were not economical. Many of these projects were were, were dreams that were unrealistic. Many of the projects uh, involved projections about the future that had no relation to reality. Not all of them. Some of them turned out to be very profitable and very good, like, like the, uh, the, 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 the port in Greece, which the Chinese built, which turned out to be incredibly profitable. But uh, much of this has turned out to be bad, and there's a lot, mountains of, bad debt out there, and it's only going to increase. There's only going to be more of this bad debt uh, in, the, uh, in the, I'd say, uh, years and decades to come from all the debt that these countries have taken on uh, from China. But this idea that this, this debt is good for China is, is just plain wrong. They're lending these countries real money and they're not getting paid back. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's not like there are assets everywhere that are worthy of taking control in in. in instead of this debt. In some places they are, but in many places they are not. And it's not like Chinese leverage over these countries is that valuable. It's not. Many of these countries have very little to offer China, ultimately. This is a much more complicated game, and it's ultimately a lose-lose game. China is losing. And China, in its current economic situation, cannot afford suddenly to have lent so much money out and not be able to recoup much of it. Now, the funny thing about all of this is that many of these countries are turning to the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, to ask for a bailout. Now, much of the money that the IMF is going to provide in order to bail these countries out comes from places like the United States. And then... It's given to these countries who are then going to use it to pay off Chinese debt? Well, the IMF is balking at this, of course. The IMF doesn't want its funds to be used to pay off the debt of China without China taking a significant haircut off of this money, off of these debts. China is a member of the IMF. It sits on the board of the IMF. So there's a slight conflict of interest there. But... It is, a, you know, the IMF is going to now have a lot of leverage over China in terms of which debts get repaid and which debts don't, under what terms they get paid. 
and this is going to be something that uh, the IMF and the United States in particular are going to have to do because the United States is the largest member of the IMF and it's a lot of U.S. money that is being devoted to this. Now, look, I don't believe the IMF should exist. Uh, I don't believe countries, states should be giving loans to anybody. I don't think um, that, that uh, the, the state should be in the business of lending money. I don't think the United States should be bailing other countries out, never mind, shouldn't even be bailing U.S. banks out, never mind other countries. So none of this should even exist. But the great irony is that it, it, it appears that it looks that, that the United States is going to be bailing out China through the IMF. Now, this is not a good scenario for anybody. It's ultimately not good for China. China is going to be squeezed and China is not going to get its money back. And, um, and uh, you know, China is not going to have the kind of leverage that, that some people thought it had uh, over these countries because that leverage is going to shift to the IMF. The IMF will have that leverage. But it's not good for the IMF to bail out the Chinese, even partially. So the United States is really going to have to figure out what role it wants to play and how much it wants to support the IMF in what it's going to be doing and is already starting to do. How tough it wants to be with China. How many of these projects does it want to see collapse? And one of the great tragedies here is that many of these countries are very poor countries. Many of these countries should have never, never devoted the resources to the kind of projects that China is funding, but instead should have been devoting these resources to building property rights infrastructure, to building legal infrastructure, to building a market economy. Instead, they're building railroads all over the place. They're building ports. They're building all kinds of things. And yet there's very little to transport. There's very, there, there, there's no benefits to all this massive infrastructure when there's no economy. There's no industry. There, there's no movement. So the real tragedy is you're going to get half-built railroads in countries that can't really afford anything. That in, in countries that can't afford to build these things that can't afford the debt payments that can't afford. And what these countries should be doing is investing heavily, maybe in education, arguably, if, if the government is going to invest in anything, but certainly in the infrastructure to sustain, to create and sustain a market economy. And now you're going to get poor countries in Africa, primarily becoming poorer or place like Sri Lanka becoming poorer. Argentina owes a lot of money to China. It's not like China is going to get any real leverage over Argentina. Maybe because of all this debt, we'll get a libertarian president of Argentina, and that'll be fun to watch. Uh, Montenegro in Europe owes a lot of money. Why? Because the Chinese built a highway, from uh, which I drove on. I actually drove on this highway. Or maybe I drove on the Albanian version of the highway. But there's a, there's a magnificent highway that goes from a, a port in Montenegro uh, towards into Serbia. This has increased debt. Montenegro's, I'm going to be in Montenegro soon, but this is going to increase the debt of the Montenegro government by gazillions of dollars. For what exactly? Uh, what is the benefit exactly? Uh, I'll be in Montenegro. I'll ask them when I'm there. I'm giving a talk in Montenegro in October. Anyway, again, something to watch. It could have profound impact on the global economy. Uh, as, as this debt collapses, as these economies go into recession, uh, well, worse than a recession, depressions, maybe they're already, in a sense, these economies are already depressed, they get worse. It puts a lot of pressure on their own populations, increase my, increases migration pressure, but also just decreases economic growth in the world. Um, it, it, a lot of this debt doesn't get paid back to China. That is more uh, negative impact on the Chinese economy. China is already weak, going to get weaker. Uh, if the IMF starts lending money here, that brings in the West into this crisis. 
the West is already part of it. A lot is going to have to happen with this debt crisis uh, that, that China has instigated by lending money to projects that do, cannot sustain the debt. There's a whole domino effect here, and it's not the domino effect that China wanted. It, you know, a, a lot of these countries resent China now. A lot of these countries view China very negatively now because China's put them in this situation. So it does not work to China's benefit at all in any dimension. Uh, but it's not, nobody's benefiting here. This is a lose, 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 lose situation as most losing transactions happen to be. The only people who benefited would be my guess. The only people who walk away from these deals better off than they started are local politicians. Are the local politicians and a lot of these are autocrats who funneled a lot of that Chinese money into their own pockets, whose uh, who, that money is now sitting in Swiss or Cayman Islands or Singapore bank accounts. And uh, yeah, the countries can't pay off the debt. Tough. They're gonna, not going to dip into that money. They've already put their share aside. And the rest of the, and, and the, rest of the, the, the countries themselves, they are, you know, they are doomed, as is the rest of the global economy in, in terms of dealing with this. So massive, massive failure of Chinese central planning, Chinese central planning of country to country debt, which should, that shouldn't exist, period. Shouldn't be lending money to other countries. Of course, China lends a lot of money to the U.S. But it does so in very liquid markets. It does so by buying U.S. treasuries the least offensive way. Um, pretty distortive, pretty, pretty something again to watch in terms of global economics.